Dark is the most unique and exciting Rocket League player in the game today. So we're going to be watching two 1v1 replays of Dark playing, one of which includes a clip that he posted to Twitter saying, I guess we're back. And if Dark thinks it's good enough to post, you know it's a good clip. But before we get to that, I want to make sure that you guys have followed Dark on Twitter. He is RLDark12. And follow him on Twitch, twitch.tv slash rldark1. And once you've done that, maybe use your Twitch Prime on him as well. Once you've done all the above, then maybe also consider subscribing to the channel as we are on a run to 100,000 subscribers before the end of the year. And we are ahead courtesy of you guys. But we're going to start today with a 1v1 between Dark and Sickies. Sickies is actually a teammate that he has played alongside. As they got into the RLCS, you might have seen coverage from Dark Previously, we played in the RLCS, and he starts off immediately with a dash kickoff play. There was actually a dash as he approached onto the wall and a dash coming off the wall. I would go back and show it to you in replay, but we would be doing that at every possible moment in this entire game, as it always is the case with Dark. So I'm going to let you go back and watch it yourself if you want. But pretty much any time Dark is around that side wall, he is dashing as much as possible, and I do think we'll eventually see other pro players catch up. But Sickies is a guy who's actually been around in the Mina scene for a while. I was looking through his Liquipedia, and he was actually on the original F-16 teams, the teams that uh, the Twins played in before they were of RLCS age, before Mina was even in the RLCS. And he was actually a substitute for that team. So he's been around for a while and is now playing alongside Dark as he goes to the ceiling, drops up for the double reset, and the dunk on Sickies. Now, this is a private match. I should point that out. But... Dark does seem to play a lot of private matches. You can check and see his replays on ballchasing.com. And so this and the next one will be private matches. You know, whether it's against Sickies or against a couple other people in the next one, you know, you can still see that him and his opponents are giving it a strong effort, even though there's no ranked points on the line. It's not just, you know, a freestyle 1v1. It really is these guys pushing the limits here in terms of what you can see in this game and of course that's mostly dark who's doing that because he is absolutely nutty now he's gonna win another kickoff into the offensive third and just see how many possible resets he could get he does decide after i think three resets to leave the ball and despite being low on boosts he's using as many chain dashes as possible to recover he actually used one too many jumps i don't know if he made a mistake there and meant to make it a dash but popped off and was forced to leave looking for perfect placement here underneath the ball trying to get it top shelf and around sickies but did not get it on target so he'll have to reset seemed like he wanted to start a dribble with a really strong ceiling touch into the ground which is only going to work if sickies decides to leave and sickies did not so now dark will have to try and attack again and of course he finds a way to get a double off the back wall at an incredibly tight angle so it'll be three two for dark We'll probably end up watching most of this from Dark POV, but we'll switch to Siki's POV whenever it makes sense. It's going to be a fake kickoff from Dark on this next possession, and it'll be multiple resets. Does he double this in? <laughs> he does. Apparently, that is crossbar and in. So Dark is making it so that every single goal is a clip so far. And now another fake kickoff that Siki's is falling for. Dark is one of the more convincing fake kickoffers in the game. Wasn't really... You know, given that title, because of his diagonal kickoff fakes necessarily, it was more of those slight offset kickoffs that he was such a effective faker. A lot of people would fall for them. Now he's going to pass to himself off the ground. Got the reset, but he didn't use it. Went to the ground instead. Popped it over Sikis, and the recovery is not quick enough, so it should be a goal. But still a one-goal lead as we approach nine seconds into halftime. Another fake kickoff. Sikis has to start reading these, considering Dark has done it many times in a row. But I tell you what, we benefit from it. Instant backflip off the reset. The pogo shot sends it to the absolute moon. And nowhere near on target. But Dark might just be able to keep this possession going. He dove in to grab boost, but chained a couple dashes together to return back to the play. Now he's got himself a reverse dribble. And he cleanly backflips to set it up into a take that never really came to fruition. And so Ziki's able to capitalize on that movement. It's so interesting. I mean, I wonder how much Dark plays with 100 boost. It feels like 
he more than any other player could benefit from that because he just seems to be using boost at every single moment to try and stay with the ball and in ones especially you know you run out eventually and you're gonna have to try and make plays on zero sometimes you put yourself out of position but okay there's maybe you know the the first example of not immediately taking a goal but even then Sikis might have recovered instead dark going for a double reset dribble out of the attacking corner and a wave dash catch results in a fifth goal I actually think that in any circumstance even a show match circumstance dark is probably going to do that same thing with that ball it's just the way he likes to play it he's certainly not taking the risk of having his kickoff goal saved not only is that boring but it actually might not be worth the goal he does make a mistaken play off the back wall so now he's actually playing from behind here against Sikis. As he's going to have to rush back after diving into the corner. Won't make it back in time. So he's actually down two. We see another fake kickoff as he tries to control the play. No, he will be attacking as quickly as possible. Big win into the left corner. So now he's got himself in an even better position than he did previously on his kickoff. Because now he's got a low boost defender for turning late to the net. And the double reset shots will fall into the bottom right. Now another fake kickoff. Sikis has just been playing right into his hand every time. This time, Dark booming to the back wall off the first touch. Sikis has no trouble clearing that away. He really seems to like these first touch reset backflips to start dribbles. As he'll take a more conventional sidewall dribble now. Actually, doesn't even have a reset in it, I'm sure. Took a lot of strength from Dark not to go for one. Now Siki's air dribble denied. Dark using a little creative dash in there in the corner to accelerate past the demo attempt. And now a bit of ground play from Dark, a rarity, especially in this game. As he decides to fake the flick, Siki's does cover it and gets himself demoed as he tries to set up the counter attack. So now Dark with a ton of space, wave dashing into the corner, or I should say zap dashing into the corner. A little lean back reset with the pogo bounce. Does he score it? No, he doesn't. He decided to hold on to the flip until the final moments. And Tiki's is able to get the save. Now, double reset, a pogo again. He's insistent on getting his pogo and he'll get it. As he air rolls around the ball, puts it ever so slightly behind Sikis. So it is 7-7 seven, seven with 12 seconds left to go. Dark gonna bring this to the side wall. Little wave dash into a wall to air dribble. Big kickoff win. Can he get it before the clock expires? It's another pogo shot and the placement is actually something I've never really seen before. Not using the corner of his car. Using the top of his car off the pogo. Try and place into that bottom left. Of course, he's already advancing the pogo touches ahead of anybody even being able to somewhat copy him. And this pogo will be denied. Since he's into the corner instantly going to lose possession and we'll have to back off now dark not the best of setups attacked almost from above the ball so she got to reset once the ground started another one an instant use of the backflip on the air dribble will put the ball in but now let's head to a little game that dark played of king of the hill with a couple of buddies and the, the game that got the clip that we saw and teased earlier in the second replay, we are watching from Dark POV still, and he's actually playing what looks like a King of the Hill against a couple around low Grand Champ opponents. Now, if you have never played King of the Hill or seen one played, basically the way it works with three players is usually when somebody scores, the person who got scored on leaves or the team and goes to spectate, whereas the other player will jump in. And in theory, both sides end up scoring a good amount and everybody rotates in and you know whoever gets the most goals or defends the hill the most ends up getting the dub. Now, I think you're going to see that Dark is not going to have too tough of a time scoring consistently against these little lower rated players as he will score first against CPU X and then Bankai will jump in and you'll see them going back and forth. But really, it's just an opportunity, you know, to watch Dark in something that's a little bit more competitive than free play because watching dark and free play can be excited in itself but you know now he does have a decent defender trying to stop him and i tell you what 
I bet you a lot of people watching this video are probably around the ranks of the two players that Dark is playing against right now. So it can give you an idea of how you might do if you were to have to play against Dark in a King of the Hill as he will score a second one against Bankai. And as you can see, CPUX joins back, or CPX.U, I should say, joins in to give it his next go. As Dark will win the kickoff and head to the side wall. First couple goals aren't so exciting, but I think we're going to see Dark start to really try and pick it up and make everyone worth our while as he goes for a nice double reset. Couldn't get the dunk on CPX.U. But possession is still his. A little fake setup as he goes to the midfield. Instead, uses the jump to push himself back down and does cut it behind CPXU. So now he has scored three here in this King of the Hill, has yet to be scored against. And I'm not surprised to see him tapping this kickoff goal away. I don't think it was a case of him not being able to get the angle. I think it's him intentionally not taking it. That's not something he wants to do here in this game. As he will play off the ceiling, a little reset pogo, and he just puts it directly behind Bankai. And a fourth goal. And we'll get a new opponent, CPXU, back in. Can one of the GCs win a kickoff? It doesn't seem like it's going to happen anytime soon as Dark wins this one into the orange half. And even though he flew far away from the ball, it seems like he still could have gotten a possession. CPXU is going to get the first attack that either of the champ slash low GCs have been able to get. And Dark stops it with ease as he now takes another take from the side wall. Double resets. Wants the pogo. Actually missed it. I think this is one of the rare times I've seen Dark not connect perfectly on a pogo. As he decides not to try and wave dash in and go for that follow up. And instead, dribble from the back corner. And he's actually taking all the boost from CPXU. So even if he already didn't have to worry about a lower rated opponent, it's a lower rated opponent with no boost. That was actually a pretty nutty backwards wave dash to backflip shot. But it was off the backboard and not in. Multiple resets for Dark. It seems like he never really planned on shooting it in the first place because he was taking it way high in the net. But he caught CPXU diving. And certainly this one will be a goal now as it'll just fall its way in. 5-0. And we got ourselves a new opponent again. Bankai trying to see if he could do the impossible here and get a goal. I'll have you guys remember that I did score goals against Dark when I played against him. <laughs> you guys can go check out that video that's on the channel. That's Bankai though, trying to not just score, but go for a clip. Pinching. Dark heading to the ceiling, gets his reset, and a dunk on the top of Bankai as he guides it into the crossbar and back down. And back to CPXU. Dark playing this one into the midfield and his opponent deciding not to try and challenge and take it away. He wants the goal line defend against the likes of Dark. That seems like a mistake to me. But actually, maybe he knows what he's doing. Gets the demo on his own goal line after the failed pogo. I shouldn't say failed pogo, the missed pogo. The pogo was definitely very strong. As Dark was prepared to defend against an aerial setup, but CPXU lost it. Now, Dark off the ceiling. It's a little sandwich reset. Passed himself off the ground. Multiple resets on his way to the net. You, you literally can't say it fast enough. You can't keep up with it. But this was the goal that Dark posted. So we will watch it again. How about in 50%? 50% as we walk through here. Dark starting on the back corner. Not contested. Floats it into the ceiling, gets a little sandwich reset on the ball, slams it into the ground, back to himself, gets a reset, backflips out of that reset into another reset in which it keeps the ball up over the top of CPXU. And yeah, I guess we're back is what Dark says about that shot. And I think that is appropriate. But we have a minute left to play still. And Dark has yet to be scored on here in this King of the Hill. And it's really tough to believe that he could ever let one in unless he did it on purpose almost as he gets himself demoed and will not challenge Bankai. I think that's a good idea. No reason to dive in when he seems to be very clearly able to react to any one of these shots. Now 
Multiple reset play, and he'll drop it in over the top of Bankai. So can he get to double digits with 34 seconds left to go? CPXU and Bankai have been very willing participants in this smackdown that Dark has been giving them. As he does not have kickoff possession, which is a bit of a rarity. But he is just basically waiting in that until he gets his free opportunity, and here it is. It shows up eventually, that boost respawned right as he started this dribble. Playing it off the ceiling, double reset, and in! So he's got nine. Can he get ten? Bankai. At least Bankai can say he didn't get the clip that went to Twitter scored on him. Although he's gotten multiple clips as both of them have. Four seconds left to go. Dark gonna take it to the side wall, just barely gets it there in time to not have the game end. And of course, gets one for the road. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's light work. It's light work for a guy like Dark. He hits these at every possible moment. And listen, if you ever wonder what it'd be like to be in a lobby against Dark, well, you might just get 10 would you might just get Tenode if he's on his game. I had to go check this out. If Dark was posting something to Twitter and he was proud of a shot, you know it was something we needed to get here on the YouTube. So make sure to follow him on Twitter and Twitch. He actually does a decent amount of streaming. And I think the best way to support him, if you ask me, because he really does, you know, create a lot of excitement and content for, you know, not just himself, but a ton of people in the Rocket League scene who love to watch Dark play. So I think one of the best ways to support him, go to his Twitch channel, Subscribe, especially if you guys have uh, Twitch Prime, which means you can subscribe for free and, and give him a little bit of uh, monetary incentive. It's great to have Dark playing. I mean, we're just we're lucky that he plays this game and he still thinks it's fun. And you know, hopefully, he continues to innovate for us because man, is he just a wonder to watch. But thanks for watching today. Uh, hopefully, you guys will come back next time.